Good morning. Please welcome Mark Collier. Morning, everyone. Glad to see you all back for day two, another round of the OpenStack Summit here in Berlin. So I'm going to open things up with some breaking news. I know that a lot of the networks like to abuse this, but I think this, is, this really uh, counts as breaking news. So, you know, one of the things that's really important in our community is naming each release of OpenStack. We just had Rocky, we're about to have Stein, and the next one will be the T name. So hopefully you're excited to get on board the train, which is going to be... <laughs> Choo-choo! Uh, the, next, the next release of, of OpenStack after Stein. Um, First, I want to thank Tony Breeds, who was really uh, did a lot of work to help facilitate getting this, this named. We get uh, a lot of input and uh, ask everyone who's a contributor to help us name it. And the reason why Train was a, a runaway success in the polling is that, uh, as it turns out, we had our PTG recently in Denver, it happened to be in a hotel uh, located very, very close to some train tracks. And so the trains would come by every night, keep everybody up. And in the fine tradition of our community, we went from complaining about it to making fun of it to naming something after it. So I think we went through the stages of grief really quickly there. And so the next release is going to be called Train, which is really exciting. So speaking of Denver and the Train release, the first open infrastructure summit ever will be held in Denver. So we are going back to Denver in uh, late April, early May of next year. Hope you're all going to make it there. Now, I've been told that we're moving a little further away from the train this time, so hopefully you'll be able to sleep at night. Um, but we are also co-locating um, co that event with the PTG, i.e. the project team's gathering. So that should be an awesome week, and hope you're all able to, to join us for that. And then we're bringing the first ever summit to China in the fourth quarter of 2019. <laughs> I'm super excited about this. I mean, I, I, we have been wanting to do a summit there for a really long time, and we're really uh, excited to be in a position to be able to do that now, and, and it'll again be you know, the Open Infrastructure Summit along with, with the PTG. Some of the details are still being worked out, but it's going to be uh, in the, the fourth quarter, and if you go to openstack.org slash summit in, in a couple of weeks, there'll be more details. So that's what's happening over the next 12 months. Now I want to wind the clock back and look at what's happened over the last 12 months for a moment. So uh, a lot of you will be learning about some of this for the first time today, but we have spent the last 12 months establishing four new pilot projects um, as part of the OpenStack Foundation. And uh, these projects are called Airship, Kata Containers, Starling X, and Zool. So you're going to have an opportunity to learn all about them this morning. And they're very, very exciting projects. Now, the model that we've come up with over the last year is pretty simple. I don't want to bore you with a lot of governance details, but basically projects start off in a pilot phase. Now, pilot projects, we really believe, have to start with code. It's a big part of our philosophy. You know, we're not trying to do paper press releases. We're like, start coding, then we'll talk about doing a pilot project. And we're looking for projects that are relevant to open infrastructure and from communities and contributors that really believe in following the four opens. And if you don't know what those are, you're, you're definitely going to learn in just a minute. Um, I'm going to tell you all about it. And then over 18 months, we expect those projects to have come up with at least one release, to have really thoroughly implemented their, their open governance model consistent with that four opens philosophy. So to get to that, I think one of the questions you may have is, why would these projects, why would these communities want to form up here in, inside of, of this community, in, inside of this foundation? And I think that it really comes down to the philosophy of how open collaboration works inside of this community. And if you go back to the very beginning of, of OpenStack, we believed early on in a defining philosophy we call the four opens. And so a lot of things have changed about, about OpenStack in, in eight plus years. Software is radically different. The tools we use are radically different. We actually had to build new tools like Zool to realize this vision. And, but the, the philosophy and the core values of this, um, this form of open collaboration has not changed. This is what we keep going back to. So I want to walk you through them uh, quickly this morning. 
So open source is probably the one that, you know, 10 years ago or so was, was kind of a high bar. You had to convince a lot of people. Those days are over, thankfully. You know, open source is pretty, pretty easy to convince people to, to embrace these days. It's pretty easy to implement. You slap an open source license on your code, boom, you're, you're open source. You know, there are still debates that rage about what license is the right license. People are writing new licenses now because they just won't let that debate die. But uh, from, from the standpoint of this community, it's pretty straightforward. OSI license is, is good to go. OpenStack you know, uses the Apache license. So I want to get into some of the tougher ones. Um, you know, this is kind of like the, the game of open collaboration. You've got to level up each time. It gets a little harder. You know, open community, very, very important. I think it's harder to define, but I'm going to give it a shot here. So a few examples, I would say, of what define open community. One, it's really about accessibility. So the community, where it, where it um, comes together, should be accessible to everyone, regardless of what organization you're in. So whether it's in-person events or mailing lists, things like that, shouldn't be limited by what your organization is or your geography. Secondly, leadership positions and authority. Those should be available to everyone. Anyone should be able to rise up into a leadership position in an open community. And by the way, this is not just development. There are lots of forms of leadership, and we're going to hear from a lot of awesome leaders from across the community this morning. Um, it, and it shouldn't matter which, which organization you work for, et cetera. Like, everyone should have that opportunity. And lastly is the global aspect. This is really, really hard, but very, very important. And honestly, I think we, we've struggled with it and grow, had growing pains in our community on this. For example, the tools you use for collaboration. Some tools are, not, are, are literally not accessible in some countries. And learning that the hard way, you know, uh, is, is tough. But over time, you've got to you know, hold yourself to this standard and try to create tools that work for everybody, regardless of what, where, where they might be located. And the other aspect of gl the global um, commitment to open community is time zones. We all know that time zones are, are a horrible problem, <laughs> but at the end of the day, the world's round. We're going to have to rotate our meetings. If you have your meeting at the same time every week, every month, somebody in the world is, is kind of uh, being left out. So that's a, a really hard one to live up to but it's also super important. So open development, I would describe this pretty simply as every single change to the code is visible throughout the process. So from the time it's first written, you know, how it's evaluated with things like you know, automated testing through code review up until its inclusion. So this is really, to summarize, about showing your work along the way and not throwing code over the wall. This is something that's so fundamental to how things are done in this community. It might seem like a no-brainer, but it's actually a very high bar for a lot of people. It's not necessarily that comfortable for a lot of people to do open source in this way. In fact, a lot of open source is not done in this way. But that's how we do it here, and it's, it's really important to how we uh, you know, live up to our core values in terms of the four opens. So the last one is open design. This is, of course, the highest level. Um, when you're leveling up in the game of open collaboration, you've got to, you know, you've got to beat the big boss here. And uh, you know, what happens in open design is that the actual ideas are available for review and consideration. So the concepts behind the code are available. Now, that's pretty scary, right? You know, open design means giving up control, which is uncomfortable. A lot of people are very uncomfortable with this. Um, but if we believe that if every contributor has a voice, you will get a better result. You know, it allows others as well who come along later and want to be part of the community, and want to be part of the open collaboration to catch up, to understand how decisions were made because those are documented because the discussions happened in the open about the design phase. And, you know, I think that I'm very hopeful moving forward that a lot more development, a lot more open collaboration will happen in this model. It's not very common today, honestly. But the reason why I'm hopeful that it's going to become much more common is if you just look back at open source, right? What I now would say is the easiest to achieve here. Eight years ago, 10 years ago, you know, early on when we we're just looking at OpenStack, open source made people very uncomfortable. The legal issues, IP concerns, people were very uncomfortable with open source. Now that's not the case. We just did a survey where three out of four 
um, companies are contributing to open source, not just, not just consuming it. So people have overcome that, those fears, learned that it's a better model. And I really believe in five to 10 years, this is how most software will be, be developed. I certainly think that would be a wonderful out outcome. And so the question that a lot of people raise when they hear this kind of philosophy is, okay, this sounds great, you know, idealistic, but isn't this gonna slow everything to a halt? You know, if you have to show your work along the way, if you have to share your ideas before you even start coding, isn't it gonna just slow things down? Have you all ever heard this? Maybe some of you have this fear. And all I would say if you, if you fall into that, that, that trap is, you fell victim to one of the classic blunders. <laughs> because in fact, as Jonathan said yesterday, the open collaboration model I just described, which OpenStack has been using for eight plus years, in the last 12 months delivered 70,000 changes in just a year. And that makes it one of the top three most active open source projects on the planet right now. And so, in fact, this model that may seem counterintuitive is actually gonna make you the fastest in the world. So what is it about this model that's Unique, what is it about that, that actually makes it work? And it's really simple. Every contributor makes a difference. This is an environment that allows for that. And when you create this kind of playing field, when you follow the four opens, you really create an opportunity where everybody can, can be a part of it. And as you've seen, it actually can allow you to move faster. So right now, our goal is to keep sharing this, this philosophy we do believe this is r the reason why some of the new projects are, have started to want to embrace um, this model, embrace this community. And another way we're gonna be sharing that is we're gonna be documenting it. We're actually writing a book. Um, Chris Hodge recently uh, sent a note to the mailing list, which is a, a critical uh, tool, of course, for collaboration to invite people to get, get involved. This is the website, openstack.org slash four opens. A little more information. Hopefully you can help uh, influence and be an author on that book. And so, getting back to the central point here, you know, we want to build more communities where every contributor makes a difference. And so, all morning, you're going to be hearing from contributors.